G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video. So here we go, a bit of a different combination. We are at race A this time and we're in one of the newer cars, one of the newer cars in GT Sport here, the Porsche 911 Turbo with the 930 shape from 1981. Introduced in one of the latest updates, 1.41 or something like that. And we are on the latest Tokyo circuit, so latest as in update 1.31, about 10 updates ago at the time of the introduction of the car, but it's the latest Tokyo variation, the south outer loop, of course there was also an inner loop added at the same time, but it's just this and the other way around with another bit. Interesting sort of track. Anyway, so it's the Tokyo Expressway and we go in the Porsche 911. So we did one qualifying time, it wasn't a very good one, but not many people did race A and it was actually near the start of the week as well, I believe, so uh, it's not to worry about qualifying times as much. So here we go into turn one. You'll have a look at the tour of the south loop as well as we go through. We are looking for a move up on the guy in third life RS 168 in the orange clad Porsche 911. Now one thing about this car, rear engine, rear wheel drive, it does have a wing but does absolutely nothing. So it basically, <laughs> the front just feels so light and it just wants to oversteer of any steering input at all. Uh, Kirill here, I think he did hit the wall on the way out of turn four, so we managed to make a position into third and braking towards the hairpin, and we just go a little bit deep, we just lift off the brakes as I thought I was able to make the corner, it's all kicking off behind, jeez, have a look at the radar there, it was absolutely mad behind, but um, we managed to get through there okay in the slipstream of this guy in second. Now normally these sort of series of corners down the straight that isn't straight, uh, turns 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. It's usually flat out and it can be in this car but it's so hard to get it flat out and I wasn't able to do it until I've had a bit of practice at it. So have a look through here, massive lift as we go through turn 10 there and we round through turn 11 now up towards another little braking zone for turn 12. You can take it fairly quickly. I have a look to break the 100 meter ball. We look up the inside of Kirill here, not quite able to get the move done, but Kirill just slides really wide into the wall and that's going to absolutely ruin his run down towards the chicane of death too is what we're going to call this. Break at the 50 board into second gear. Look at this, look at monster curbs go through here side by side. Never going to end well, but honestly, <laughs> didn't look like it, but that was actually a fairly good run through there. Side by side especially. Kirill all over that second curb of turn 14. I was all over the curb of turn 13. We go both keep it within the track limits and get through there penalty free. But from all the fighting, <laughs> have a look at the leader, ring leader, ironically, has got a five second gap in one lap. So he's on for a good victory, provided that he can keep control of the Porsche here, which is a very difficult car to control, very light front end, and then really oversteery as well. It's not a very nice car to drive, but of course it's a Porsche classic, so um, gonna have to get used to it, I guess. We've gone for the mint green color as well. So of course race A it was a specially provided car, so I didn't actually have to buy it. So um, I was able to choose any color that, that any in-game color that the game allowed and I went for mid green this time so we're breaking towards the hairpin again turn six has it really deceiving the way that braking zone ends in this car it feels like you're going to make the corner but then when you get there you're going too far so you've really got to slow down there you see Kirill gets a massive oversteer moment on the exit there and we go down the straight almost side by side not a good idea so I just pull in behind I think he did have the momentum on me and he probably deserved to stay in second place it wasn't alongside enough to be able to justify me staying there but you just see how close I'm getting to these walls I really have to maximize the width of the track here guy behind is looking right behind he's only a tenth behind going through this little chicane here and you see just how easy it is the car just wants to float all over the track it just doesn't want to stick and we just have the guy in fourth going to the back of us now breaking up towards turn 12 again see all pretty much a repeat of last time Kirill slides wide I slide wide after the apex going down towards the chicane of death too never a good idea side by side as we saw the last lap and am I able to pull in ahead I am clatter over the curbs on the power m massive drift have a look at us three there still trying to control the Porsche that's how hard to control it is but the guy in currently in third just managed to pull ahead which put him in third because he wasn't fourth What's his name? Caber, Caber Gebel. Interesting name there. But it's now, it's now halfway through the race. Two laps of four complete. And 
you probably don't want to lose touch with this pair, so hopefully they have a massive accident and we're able to capitalise on that. Get through turn one nicely this time, so you got, do have to slide the car, but you don't want to slide it so far as to get out of control. Almost hit the, well actually we do hit the wall going through turn three, but it's all right. We round out turn four now, massive slide through here. Never good to slide that much, but pretty much unavoidable in this car, as it seems. Break down towards the turn six hairpin again. Break pretty much just after the 150 board in this instance. Do we get into the corner nicely? Yes, we do. Look at that. Right at the apex. So close to the wall. Get on the power nice and smoothly. You don't want to slide the car out of there. And we managed to get on there nicely. But we were a little bit tardy coming onto the throttle compared to the two guys up ahead. So they just streak out a bit more of a gap. But I'm in the slipstream, so that's always good. But that's... Well, it's always good as in your gain in a straight line, which this basically is. But in this particular car, the rear wing pretty much does nothing. And and so all the um, all that slipstream is doing is giving you dirty air through here, which is absolutely perilous. You see, I slammed into the wall that time, pretty much on edge for a five second penalty, because we absolutely don't want that. That'll absolutely kill the race. As we are door number four, actually. If I look behind, you'll see on my bonnet I've got a big four slapped on there. So that is my car number, but the game calculates that based on where, on based on your driver rating. So you always want to finish higher than the number showing in your car. So DR increases. Go through the chicane, clatter over that second curb, and almost hit that wall. You can get really close, but you don't want to get too close as to hit it. Oh, actually, no. Half second penalty, ignoring the track limit. I guess you do need to keep it into the. Do you want to keep at least two wheels on that painted kerb, I think, or don't have the whole car pass the white line on the edge of the track, which I do going up here using all of the apron for turn one there. We just skip ahead, nothing much happened, I serve the penalty, we slide, yep, we do hit the wall, yep, yeah. but yellow flags are out, so I can see the two guys up ahead, so immediate thought was lead is bindle, but I looked up at the gap 13 seconds, and we just see parked on the edge of the chicane, it's the guy in 11th guy in last place, so he's still on lap 3 and he's just decided to stop, obviously, has given up trying to control the Porsche, which is a massive job, really, but we managed to come up to the line in a few seconds time, it is going to be a 4th place, which is, I guess, could, could be better, could be worse, you know, that's where I was expected to finish based on my door number, so we managed to not lose DR at least. And we did have half a second of penalty, but it was for track limits, so SR will probably increase marginally, but that's okay. We'll move on to the next one. But before that, we'll have another round of qualifying. So this is a qualifying lap, so let's actually take the opportunity to go through a lap of Tokyo Expressway South Outer Loop. So up the main straight now, and there's a little kink in the straight. Probably could be a turn, but I don't think it's a turn. Break at the 100 meter board for turn one. Slide it in there, third gear corner here. Slide it through there nicely and then up the run to turn two over to the right hand side and throw it in in third gear. A little bit of a slide and tap of the brakes, we don't hit the wall in turn three, get through there nicely and turn four, there's a camber, a little bit of camber on the inside of turn four. You see how early we can get on the power when the car is under control, that's the key. Now we're going to head down the hill towards the hairpin. Turn five, the shallow right hander along the straight, turn five, and then turn six, got a break. Just after the 150 ball, keep it over to the left hand track. Second gear is what I select this time deceptive because um, when you hit first gear you slow down a little more and we power out of that hairpin in second gear so that avoids the awkward gear change between first and second which is normally always big clunk in this game. Turn seven, shallow left hander here and then we're going to go up a little bit more of a straight into turn eight, another left hander and then we're on another bit of straight here. So I think we do keep it flat out through here in this particular lap which is why it was my best turn. Uh, turn 9 was that right-hander, turn 10 this left-hander, and turn 11 the right-hander following. You see we were flat out there in 4th gear, this car only has 4 gears, but it's got a really long 4th gear, so you never hit the end of the rev range. Break at the 100 metre board, 3rd gear for this corner, you can carry a lot of speed through here, but you want to keep it nice on the inside, onto the power nice and early, a little bit of a slide, but not to worry, 1.2 seconds up on a 56-1 break, just after the 50 metre board for the chicane here, 2nd gear, you want to just trail it through there, and then get on the power as early as possible, keep your wheels within the line, for the chicane and then turn 15, the final corner is flat out in this car, which is an absolute, <laughs> absolute godsend that we don't have to break because that is so perilous, but we get through the final corner okay without touching the wall and then we cross the line. It's a 54.2, which is actually pretty good, not bad, a few seconds off the top times, but it's nothing we can't deal with, so we're going to start the final race. 
So this was the race that immediately followed the execution of that qualifying time. As you'll see, I do choose the orange, the orange um, or sort of brown, burnt orange colour this particular time. And we put ourselves on second place. It's got the same guys before in the lead, ringleader 1000. So he sticks in the lead with his qualifying time and I'm just behind in second place with my qualifying time of 54, 1 minute 54.2. If only it was 54.2, 54 seconds, but Honestly, it's probably going to be 54 minutes before 54 seconds, considering who's driving. We'll warm up to the line, so let's hope we can stick with the leader this time and not get caught in the pack. Hopefully we don't get swallowed up by making a mistake at turn one. It's always easy to do on the first lap because you're going at a different speed than what you're normally doing in qualifying, because you come off halfway down the straight and begin to get on the power rather than at the last corner. We'll accelerate up to turn one, break a little bit later, just at the 50 metre board this time, just because we're going slower. We actually get through there nicely this time. So now everything's back to normal. Ringleader grazes the wall on the left hand side, but he gets through here okay. We actually get a good run through here, a very qualifying-esque way through here. Ringleader's way narrow for turn four. That's never a good idea. You see how much ground we gain up. We do touch the wall on the outside and you just see how violent it is. The slide can really really confuse you, you don't quite understand how quickly you're going when you're sliding because you don't quite have a feel of the car breaking towards the hairpin now let's see hairpins a good overtaking opportunity as the guy in third now in second decides to demonstrate for me at a very apt moment and he manages to get through to second place albeit with a bit of contact but um, I will give him the benefit of the doubt Considering how hard this car is to control, just flashing my lights at him to let him know that I'm not going to forgive him for that, not going to forget that move. So we're always going to try and set our eyes on either finishing at least where we started or gaining positions. Of course, if you finish where you start, the race is a waste of time. Um, but if you all raise a position, the race is always worth it. If you lower positions, well, I won't talk about that. But um, we'll continue on anyway. See, ring lead actually makes a bit of a mistake on the run towards turn 12. And we just get caught with this guy here. And he just spears into the wall after a bit of contact with me. But in this particular time, thank goodness, the GT Sport gods were on my side. I don't have a penalty for that. So we managed to keep in second place. So let's hope we can actually gain this gap back to ringleader is one and a half seconds ahead of course not in slipstream range especially in um, these cars at least so of course if you're in like a car that is 300 kilometers an hour it might be slipstream you might get a bit of slipstream but not in this car at least especially also there's not much aero work on this car so slipstream isn't as powerful as in a GT car per se so uh, you always want to try and be as close as possible but not always through curves as well because that's dirty air See, it's a very complicated balance between slipstream and dirty air when you're behind on a racetrack. Slide through turn four, my goodness, that was beautiful. And ringleader just makes a bit of a mistake and crashes into the wall twice in the exit of turn four. You see how much time we gain up. Now we're in slipstream range, breaking towards the hairpin now. Let's see if we're able to get through here nicely without sliding too wide. Ringleader takes it high and wide, able to carry the speed through, but I take it narrow, trying to uh, prioritise getting on the power as early as possible. And collectively, both those things coalesce to allow me to get two tenths behind down this straight here. So this this straight prepares me for moving to turn 12, which is it, which is good place for overtaking as well, because it's actually quite quick and it's more than 90 degrees. So that more than a corner more than 90 degrees is an invitation for overtakes to happen. Let's see, slide through the high speed chicane halfway down the straight. Ringleader just gets it a little bit better than me. Three tenths behind I am now, close to close to four. Probably not quite close enough for a move. No, we're not. We actually don't even attempt to go for the move through there. So we still have two more laps though, so not to worry. Let's see if we can break the latest into the chicane. As I think the breaking point slightly after the 50 meter board. It is, but we managed to get the breaking point nicely this time. Hop over those curbs. A little bit tardy on the power. You just see the little tap of the brakes on the way out as to not slide wide. But it's all right, we get a nice run through the final turn now. So we're in ringleader slipstream now, down the main straight, which is always what you want. 
especially with a couple of laps to go. As we're on lap three now, halfway through the race. Two more laps to go. Let's see if we can get the move on ring leader. So we're going to come into turn one now. Hopefully we don't make a mistake through the S's at the start of the lap. And I think we've done it. Oh my goodness. Just slide wide into the wall. And just because these cars just accelerate so much slower than a GT car. A little mistake like that. And another mistake like that. That's a big one actually. You lose so much momentum through there. As you can see we've lost basically a second. More than a second now. From one little mistake going through turn three or on the entry to turn three. And now I've attracted the attention of the guy in third flashing his headlights at me returning the favour from a few laps ago. So let's hope we can actually keep second place this time, breaking in towards the hairpin. Hopefully we don't get lunged again. I don't think we do. Meet the apex nicely. Got it really gentle on the power. You just see how much throttle I added and just the car began to just... The rear end just wanted to turn around. We actually get a good run out of there. Have a look at the gap under my flag on the left-hand side. 1.7 seconds ahead of the guy in third. I don't think he's going to be able to get that gap, and he doesn't. As we flash ahead, it's going to be a second place. Three seconds from the guy in third, and four and a half seconds off the lead. Not too bad. That's about the best race I was going to have in race A's. I normally don't do too many race A's because it's not typically that interesting. But we managed to get through here okay. So that's going to be it there. As you see me celebrate a second place, I also had door number two. So that's always a good thing. Always a good thing to finish uh, your door number, which I've done both instances. But they were the only two races I did. So that's all this video is going to be today. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, little run around Tokyo South Loop. Uh, that's an interesting track as well. I do enjoy the South Loops as well as the East Loop. The Central is a bit boring, but... The east and south loops of Tokyo are good in this game. Also, I don't mind the Porsche, but it's very hard to drive. Not really my type of car, but um, it's not too bad. I didn't have to buy it, so might as well take what I can get for free. I do urge you to click that like button to let me know that you liked it, and do press that subscribe button to see amazing videos like this in your subscription box every week. But that's going to be it for the video today, and that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later. Thank you.